Amen. All right, turn in your fill-in sheets to the very, very beginning and get ready to rock and roll. Uh, let me see one more time, show of hands, how many of you were here on Wednesday? Wasn't that a good word? Yes. Amen. We're going to kind of do some recap and then add to it a little bit. It's time to give God what we have by Pastor Billy Joe Watts. You give God your best. Everyone say best. best. You give God your best self. What would be the uh, opposite of giving your best self? Your worst self, right? Like not being all in, not being 100%. Anybody ever been not all in before? Yeah. I have. Like at track practice? Yeah. I was like this. Anybody do that at track practice? You're not all in. You're not really that invested. You really don't want to be there. Your shins hurt. You can't breathe. You just want to drink a water. It's like 100 degrees out. You don't want to run anymore. That's not giving your best effort. But we want to give God our best. So let's look at Romans chapter 13. We're going to read verse 11 and 12 from the Passion Translation. That is a huge clock, by the way. <laughs> Charity's like, don't mind me. I'm just trying to sit here with this giant clock. To live like this is all more, all the more urgent for the time is running out. Everybody say time is running out. Every single day the clock is ticking. And you know. I just made me think of that old school DC talk. Time is ticking. ticking away. Y'all should look it up. It goes hard. Tick -tock, tickety talk. All right. Mm -hmm. Time is ticking away. It's time for us to wake up for our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Night's darkness is dissolving away and a new day, a new day has come. Y'all heard that song? No, because y'all are in sixth through eighth grade. <laughs> Night's darkness is dissolving away, a new day of destiny dawns. So we must once and for all strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness, removing it like filthy clothes. And once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. Everyone say weapon. Weapon. Number one, you give God your time. We have here a Sterling and Noble Clock Company amazing clock for the representational purposes of you saying i'm you're not giving god a clock okay you're giving him your time what does it mean to give god your time spend time with him good answer was that you trey good job what else how else could you give god your time do your bible reading good answer anybody else pray that's good daily devotional that's good. PFS. That's right. What about serving at church? Would that be giving God your time? Yeah, that's a good one. Why? Because you could be doing something else with your time. Yeah. But you say, I'm going to designate this time as a time to serve. Thank you so much for the varsity students who are in the room st serving right now. Literally, they don't have to be here. Right. They've chosen to be here. They've chosen to serve me and Pastor Jerry. They've chosen to serve you guys uh, by running tech and sound and cameras and computers and lights and all those different things. They're giving of their time. It's the same way for us. We want to give God our time. Time is one of the greatest commodities that we possess. Commodity, C-O-M-M-O-D-I-T-E-S, T-I-E-S, that we possess. The younger you are, the more time you can give God, right? Like if somebody's 75 and they're like, wow, I need to give God my time, they have less time. Commodities, throw commodities up there for me. Throw commodities, C-O-M-M-O-D-I-T-I-E-S. That's one of our greatest commodities. Time is one of our greatest commodities. It's something that you have that you can give. So the younger you are, the more time you can give. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Like you guys, until the Lord Jesus returns, like literally you have your life ahead of you. The Bible promises us 120 years. So depending on when Jesus comes back, even though we know it's going to be soon, even though we know it's going to be very soon, you guys have time to give. The next one, we have to live one day at a time. One day at one time, but we are living for eternity in that one day. So that means today yeah. I'm living for eternity, That's right? That's all we have to live is right now. Right. We can't live tomorrow because tomorrow has not yet come. We yeah. can't live yesterday, why? Because yesterday is gone. Right. So we have today 
to live for eternity. Does that yeah. make sense? That's pretty profound. It's really, it's really like kind of like a mind bender until you realize, no, it's not a mind bender. It just means yeah. like today is my day yeah. to live for eternity. If we focus one day at a time, the decades will take care of themselves. Pastor Charity said that so profound. It's the exact same principle that the statement before said, but, but just an amazing way to think about um, even as people grow, as they mature, you know, for you guys, you know, decades is somewhat irrelevant because how, how old are you guys? Shout it out. 12, 13, 14, 12, 13, 14. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Do you know what I'm saying? That means you haven't lived decades yet. How long is a decade? 10 years. So you've got one decade singular under your belt. Amen. Come on, somebody. Boom. I've been around more than a decade. Say something. You know what I mean? But like as you grow and as you mature, then you realize my decades, just like you guys have already lived a decade, your decade was made up of your choices. You know, and when you're like one, do you really remember one? No. Do you really remember when you were two? No. Do you remember when you were three? Does anybody remember when they were three? Okay, maybe four. Does anybody remember when they were four? Yes. Five. You know, went to SeaWorld, still remember. See, so it's kind of like if you're, if you're 14 in this room, it's like you literally can kind of almost remember the last decade because you don't really start remembering stuff until you're like four and you go to SeaWorld. Yeah. Even though I didn't get to go to SeaWorld when I was four. But the point is that decade was made up of days, days right? And you can break it down like the, the decade was made up of years. That was 10 years. Those years were made up of months. Those months were made up of weeks, but those weeks were made up of single days. So today is the day that you have to live for eternity. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan and bring... Uh, perfect plan of bringing good into our lives for we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose god is interested in our time he is paying attention what does it mean to pay attention anybody know put your eyes on someone that's right pay attention like watch what i'm doing pay attention to focus right That's what God is thinking about. He's focused on us. He's watching us. He's paying attention to what it is that we're doing. It's important. It's important to him. Just like if you, if you've ever like, have any, any of you ever thrown something in the microwave and you kind of like started it and you walked away and then you came back and you're like, oh my gosh, I set it on fire. I destroyed it. I didn't pay attention. I wasn't watching it. No, it's important to him. Things that are important to us, we watch. That's right. And he's watching. God is interested in our time. First John chapter two Verse 13 and 14, I remind you, my dear children, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. You veterans were in on the ground floor and know the one who started all this. You newcomers have won a big victory over the evil one. And a second reminder, dear children, you know the Father from personal experience. Everybody say personal experience. Personal experience. You veterans know the one who started it all and you newcomers such vitality and strength. God's word is so steady in you. Your fellowship with God enables you to gain a victory over the evil one. Let's see here. Luke chapter 16, verse 10 through 13. Jesus went on to make these comments. If you're honest in small things, what do you think you will be in big things? Honest. If you're crooked in small things, or if you are a crook in small things, what do you think you'll be in big things? A crook. If you're not honest in small jobs, who will put you in charge of the store? I love that. I love that. I was even thinking just like how that applies to literally everybody in the room. Think about a store owner who's like kind of been toying about making so-and-so a manager, but then they hear that word and it's like, you know what? So-and-so hasn't been faithful. That's going to be a bad move. I'm going to regret doing that. I may, maybe they just need a little more time to prove themselves. Yeah. For us, we're, you know, you guys aren't necessarily maybe business owners yet. What does that mean? You can be faithful in the things that you have to do now. Why? So that God can make you ruler over much. These are, these are amazingly simple, but they're amazingly powerful principles. I, I encourage you to really grasp these. No worker can serve two bosses. He'll either hate the first and love the second or adore the first and despise the second. But you can't serve both God and 
the bank or God and mammon or God and money. So many people are serving money. Ecclesiastes 3.1. This is in the easy to read version. Hallelujah. There's a right time for everything. Everybody say a right time. Right time. And everything on earth will happen at the right time. Everything will happen at the right time. Everything will happen at the right time. What does that mean? Does that mean God is in control? No. That means when you follow in the footsteps that the Lord has for you, when you yeah, follow the path right. that he has for your life, there is a time and a season to everything. Yeah. So write that down. Everything will happen at the right time and understand the context of it. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. So be humble. Everybody say humble. Humble. Under God's powerful hand. Then he will lift you up when the right time comes. What would be the purpose of God lifting you up? So that you can be seen by men? Maybe so that he could be glorified? That's good. Maybe so that he could get honor through your life, your words, your conduct? Would it be that? Yeah. Right. See, God wants to lift you up in a place that you can change. Just like Jesus was not exalted so that Jesus could be exalted. He literally kept pointing everybody back to his father. He said, there is none good but God. God. We do the same thing. Jesus is our example. The next statement, your time is now. Ephesians 5, 16. I mean that you should use every opportunity you have for doing good because these are evil things times. Anybody notice that we're living in evil times? Okay, so number one, we're giving God our time. Number two, we're giving God our... Here, I'll take the clock. You got it? Here, got it. I'm going to put it right here, maybe. Just kidding. I'm going to put it right there. I don't want it to fall over. Mike, check. Check one, two. Okay, good. It works. <laughs> Y'all were trying to figure out how I made that work, huh? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> All right. This represents talent. Why? Because Pastor Billy Joe Watts was a gifted communicator. Even from the time that he was young. Remember he told the story, if you weren't here on Wednesday night, he told a story where he went to junior college and he was in a communications class. And he like literally got up and he started to speak and he started to communicate. And the professor said, young man, sit down. And then you're like, oh my gosh, he did bad. That's why I made And he's like, you pass the class and you don't have to take the final exam. Like he did so good that literally the professor was like, you pass. You don't even have to take the final. You're skilled. You're gifted. You're eloquent. You're, you, you know what I'm saying? Like he was a gifted communicator. See, but he wasn't just focused on his gift. He was focused on the one who gave him the gift, the one who gave him that talent. That's the way we need to be. Your gift has to be plugged in to the source. That's why we have this old school mic because it was representing old school back in the day uh, when Pastor Watts was doing his thing. But the thing is, old school microphones, like before we have these amazing wireless microphones. Anybody know how wireless mic works? <laughs> Bluetooth, that was a good answer. Technically it's uh, 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 FM, FM, FM frequencies. Um, but the point is this, microphones used to have to plug in. There was a day and time when they didn't have a wireless microphone like this. Like literally, and we just put a short cord on here for the purpose of illustrations, but they used to have like long cords and it was like you were tethered depending on how long your cord was, how far you could go. And so the thing is, this microphone will never work unless it's plugged in. It's still a microphone, right? It still has a capsule, a little diaphragm in there that's capable of taking sound waves as they vibrate the diaphragm and turning them into electrical impulses and sending them down the wire. But unless the wire is plugged in. So the thing is, you might have all of the goods, right? This has a capsule, a diaphragm. It has all the wiring. But if it's not plugged in, it doesn't work. It's the same way with you. Right. You might have all of the goods and whatever and this and that. And you might be good at this or good at that and skilled here, or skilled there, or gifted here, or gifted there, or talented. But if you're not plugged into the source, the one who gave you those gifts and those talents and those abilities in the first place, you will never right. be effective. Ever. 
So the thing is, that's not a scary thing. It's just something you have to understand. I got to be plugged into my source. I got to be plugged into my creator. And my creator is God. He's the one who knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. My creator is God and I'm not. And if you establish that and that becomes real to you and you say, you know what? So I'm going to have to make decisions based on the fact that I need to be plugged into my creator. Your life will never be the same. Your effectiveness will be off the charts because God is working through you. See, we don't work for God in life. He works through us. And so that's an exciting thing. What does that mean? That means you never have to worry about not measuring up. You never have to worry about, well, my friend is a better singer than me or a better communicator than me or a better at business than me or a better organization or they're funnier than me. Why? Because you don't have to compare yourself because you're fearfully and wonderfully made and there are gifts on the inside of you. If you'll plug into your source, your gifts will begin to work. Your gifts will begin to function. Your gifts will begin to bless people. See, this mic is a blessing to me because I don't have to yell really, really loud. And I've already been singing, and then i got to sing, and then i got to sing. If I had to sing all three services and preach with no microphone, at the end of the day, I would be like, okay, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to go home, put eyes on my throat. So it's a wonderful tool, and it's a blessing to me, and it's a blessing to you. You can hear me clearly. They can hear me on the World Wide Web. Hello out there. Do you understand? These are tools. These bless people. The gifts that are on the inside of you are tools. They're designed by God to bless people. But you have to be plugged into the source. You on, in and of yourself, it would be like this microphone. Thank you, Pastor Charity. You are the most beautiful assistant in the whole wide world. This microphone in and of itself, look, there's the connectors right there. They're right there. All the equipment's on the inside. But without it being plugged in, it is not blessing anybody. See, watch. You guys couldn't hear me, right? Why? Because I was talking to a microphone that doesn't work. <laughs> it's amazing at how just immediately like by speaking into this the microphone doesn't work but the thing is you're amazing but if you're not plugged in it just doesn't work good. all right let's move on you guys get it i know you get it but illustrations are so helpful Sometimes it's the simplest of things that remind us, okay, yeah. I gotta give my, God my time. I gotta give God my talent. Your gift has to be plugged into him. Uh, there's the parable of the talents. You guys are familiar with that, that, that two people were stewards over their talents, but the third person was not. They hid their talent. And so some of you in this room, that's what you've been doing. You've been hiding your talent. Why? Because maybe the enemies caused you to be fearful. Maybe you've been worried. Maybe you've been insecure. Maybe you've been like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be in pride. So I'm just going to do nothing with my gift. That's not how it works. You say, God, whatever I have is of you. And without you, then, then it's nothing. But with you, my gifts can be a blessing. Maybe you're a talented singer. Maybe you can play. Maybe you can preach. Maybe you can speak. Maybe you're an encourager. God has such diversity of gifts in the body of Christ. And he's not created any of us without significance, something significant. Character is the sum total of your everyday choices. I I love that. I want you to get that. Your character is the sum total of your everyday choices. What does that mean? Your character, the character that you have today, is the result of your choices in the past. So what does that mean? That means if you've made bad choices, you can make adjustments and thereby shape and mold and form your character into a man or a woman of God. A man or a woman who doesn't steal. A man or a woman who doesn't lie. A man or a woman who says what they mean. Who doesn't just use their words flippantly and casually, but uses your word with intention. And what does that do? That shapes your character and people begin to see, man, if they say they're going to be there, they're going to be there. If they tell you they got your back, they got your back. If they tell you they're not going to spread your business, they're not going to spread your business. Those are all things that are character, but it happens one day at a time, one decision at a time. I love that. It's the sum total of our everyday decisions, of our choices. Your talent is not enough. It's just not. This little microphone over here, it it ain't nothing. It's not enough. But when it's plugged into the source, it becomes effective. It becomes vital and it becomes uh, important. What's that statement? How does it go where like your your talent will not keep you beyond your character? Ooh. So, So regardless of how talented you are, if you lack character, that character deficiency will show up 
And your, your talent cannot sustain a lack of character, which means while you're serving right now, while you're growing, and if you're not putting your hand to anything, then you're not giving yourself an opportunity to grow. And so you want to challenge yourself. Selfishness will always keep your gifts locked up inside of you. You can't be selfish and, and move forward in, in what God has given you. You have to work it. But even once you start working it, you have to realize that you're growing your character at the same time. Like you wouldn't have the expectation that last night we were at a bar hung over and then today we're going to come in here and just preach and be a pastor right but yet people in the congregation think that just because our gift is different and our gift is a platform gift you know we went to a, a church in Tulsa we, we, we didn't go to this church but we've we heard about this church and um and so the worship pastor at the time, like literally almost every Sunday would, would have to like find one of the musicians and they, they would be drunk. Like they would be like faded on the stage during, during the service. And, and, and so when you're a baby Christian, maybe there's allowances made for you to grow and, and develop your character. But do you understand that like, even right now, as you're sitting in this chair, you know, what is your character? How are you behind closed doors? Like, what kind of friend are you? Do you gossip? Are you consistent in, in your relationship with God? Because, guys, if this isn't personal to you, I would just challenge you to ask yourself why. Like, if, it, if God's love doesn't mean enough to me to spend a little bit of time with him every single day, maybe I don't know how to do it, which that's why we have Bible reading things available for you, and our leaders in, in the room would love to help you understand that when you take one when you leave today. But, but, but his love, there, there's nothing without his love. But that should motivate you to have a personal relationship with him every single day. That's your character. Your character is what you do when nobody's watching, not doing the right thing when people are watching you. That's not character. Anybody can do that, but it's how you are and who you are from the inside. And you can write down this verse, Matthew 15, eight, um, Jesus said, these people draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And so it's important that we realize that what's going on on the inside, like God sees that. Right. And it's not just that we go through the motions, that's your character. And guys, just like muscles have to be developed, character has to be developed. And character isn't developed as you sit in your room by yourself, there's no pressure there. Character is developed as you get around other people and you have to work together on praise and worship team or on serving team. Like you realize, oh, I'm not, I'm not as good at that as they are. And then you have to deal with those mind games and, and recognize that you're not going to be in strife and you're not going to be insecure. Do you understand? So, so all of these things are important. Like, yes, we celebrate your talent, but really we celebrate the God who gave you that talent. It's about your character. The problem is your talent will oftentimes be celebrated. Yes. And what that means is your talent can take you to a yeah. place where your character is not strong enough to sustain you. Yeah. And so what that means is that's on you. Yeah. Why? Because it's our responsibility to cultivate our character and to strengthen and fortify our character, meaning what we do behind closed doors, what we do when no one's watching, so to speak. That was our responsibility to cultivate that character and be strong so that it, when, when your talent maybe takes you to a place of influence, the character is there to undergird and sustain you. And that's your responsibility. It's a big responsibility. But to me, it's an exciting thing. Why? Because God has given all of us talents and abilities. Well, and the enemy will deceive you in acting like your character is not that important. It's not that big of a deal, but then he'll rip you off when you really do have a huge platform. Like I'm thinking of an individual who had a, a very successful and long, long enduring um, ministry career. Um, but, but it was all, there were a lot of ugly things behind closed doors. And when, the, when the enemy exposed all of that, or when all of that was exposed and it will just know, be sure your sin will find you out. And when the rug was ripped out from under him, I mean, it, you don't recover from something like that. Like your life is never the same again. And so what it was, was it was an overemphasis day after day after day on my talent. Like I'm good, I'm good, I can do this and it'll be fine. And really even isolating, hiding yourself when you're struggling with something and not being honest and saying, hey, like I have this addiction or I have this problem or I have this attitude just feeling like I can fix it, I can fix it. You can't fix it by yourself. Right. 
And the Bible specifically tells us when we have situations like that, um, you can write down James 5 verse 16 says that we're to confess our faults one to another. That's not like telling our bestie every time we make a mistake or telling our bro or whatever you guys call each other. Um, like every time we make a mistake, faults means your fault lines. Like the San Andreas fault line, which exists in the state of California, they're very vulnerable to earthquakes to not being stable. So there should be somebody, we say it this way at Choose Life, you guys have heard us, like that's in the ring with you, that's aware, okay, this is your fault line, this is where the enemy tries to get at you. I wanna support you, I wanna, I wanna encourage you, I wanna point you back to the word of God that's your answer, that's your victory. Because when we hide, we, we hide struggles, we, we hide problems, and, and at a, a certain point of time, listen, the veil will be, and the veil will be removed, and all hidden things will be revealed, and, and then at that point, nobody cares how talented you are because you're trash. Like you have no character. So you have to be developing and you have a great time right now while you're young to be developing your gift, but also developing your character. Really guys, even in the small things, like if it bugs you, if it, if, if you're convicted about it, respond to that. Because every time you don't respond to that, uh, um, you, you become more and more desensitized to that voice. You said something you shouldn't have said. You hid something from your mom. It was even just a small thing and, and it, nothing turned out bad. Like it wasn't a big deal. No, but that makes you a liar. Right. Do you want to be a person that can lie easy and get away with it? No. What happens when you lie and you cheat in your business and you get thrown in jail for embezzling? Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're so good at it. I did, we were playing a game um, that we play sometimes with interns and just young adults and I don't like to play the game. It's not my favorite because there is lying involved in the game and deception. But I remember um, playing this years and years ago and this person that we were playing with was like, I'm really good at, like, I'm really good at lying. And I just like made a little note, you know, like, like number one, you said that like so confidently, like that was something to be celebrated. And now like as a person who's in relationship with you, like we're friends, like, I'm really glad to know that you're good at lying. And do you know that it proved to be so true in this person's life that they would act like certain things weren't a big deal that maybe they weren't, but they, maybe they were, do you know what I mean? So, so just even little things in your character, little attitudes, do you want to grow up and, and always be short tempered and be angry and be judgmental and catty girls? Probably not. You shouldn't. That's not, that's not the biblical profile for a woman. So, so that all starts like right here, right now, like every single day choosing character over talent or choosing character over complacency and just being like, I don't care what, whatever, it's fine. I'll just get a job. Pays a lot of money one day. You weren't made for a job. You were made for destiny. The world, the world will tell you, just get a good job, make a lot of money. That's their plan for your life. That's not God's plan for your life. God's plan for your life is that you dominate, that you, you excel in whatever capacity he's called you to. So be thinking about that. Um, teachability expands your talent. So the talent that God has given you is very important. But just like we say talent is not enough, the fact that he's given you talent is yeah, not enough. That's right. What does it mean to be teachable? Okay, you can be taught easily. That's a good answer. You can be corrected, very good answer. Right, part of being taught is being corrected. Maybe even ask yourself, write that down. How am I with correction? Mm, mm, go ahead and write that down. That's good. Ask yourself, how, how am I with correction? Correction is something like when we're kids, like, I don't want to get in trouble. Please don't tell on me. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. But as you grow, you, you, don't see, you don't see correction as, oh, I got in trouble. You see it as somebody loves me enough to tell me I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. Somebody loves me enough to tell me there's a better way. Yeah. Does that make sense? And so you have to ask yourself, am I teachable? You want to be teachable. It's something, it's something that you cultivate in your life. Well, and God's given us a person, our pastors, our leaders, the manifestation of your gift and your talent begin to truly flourish when you plug in to the man or woman of God that God has placed in your life. And once you fill in those blanks, you can also write down Psalms 92, 13, I believe. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. So the manifestation of your gift and your talent begin to truly flourish when you plug into 
the man or the woman of God. That's your pastors. You can leave those, those blanks up. Let me read 2 Corinthians 4, 7. It says, we have this treasure from God, but we are only like clay jars that hold the treasure. This is to show that the amazing power we have is from God, yes. not from us. So it's like we are a container. Yes. What is a container for? Containing. <laughs> to hold things, right? <laughs> so what would, what would we be designed to hold? The talent, the power, the gifts, abilities of God Almighty. Yes. We're made. That's a big deal. That, that shouldn't be taken lightly. Each and every one of you. Maybe no one's ever told you before that you're good stuff. I'm here to tell you this morning, you're good stuff. I'm here to tell you your life matters. God is literally like, he, he's invested in you. He has expectation for, for your life to be amazing, to produce great fruit for his kingdom. It's such an amazing and fulfilling thing. That doesn't mean you have to be a pastor. It doesn't mean you have to work at a church. It means that you understand as God's child, my life has value. My life has importance. I can contribute to his kingdom in a great and mighty way. God will show you what that looks like. It may be through business. It may be through outreach. It may be through evangelism. It may be through serving in your local church. There are so many different ways where we can advance his kingdom. And everybody's part is significant. I'm probably going to go. Okay. Last statement there before we move into number three is the gift is from God, not you. The gift is from God, not you. Let's move into number three, which is give God your treasure. I love you guys. I'm going to dismiss the adult service. Love you, Pastor Greg. Pastor Billy Joe demonstrated this um, Wednesday night, obviously with treasure, but it's not just money. It's, it's what's important or what you hold near and dear to your heart. And I want you to ask yourself that right now. Like, what is the most important to you? What is the most important to you? It's not just money, but it's what's valuable, your treasure. Second Timothy chapter 2, um, or chapter 1, verse 14 says, Guard well this incomparable treasure by the spirit of holiness living within you. Guys, the treasure that's in you should be taken seriously. And you are like, well, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. Of course you don't. But, but valuing the gift that God has placed in you starts with valuing God and valuing your relationship with God. And you know what that looks like right here and right now. If you really want to strike it rich, tap into the true riches of wisdom and knowledge that can only be found in Christ. When you pursue him, you'll have every other thing. That's what Matthew 6.33 says. When we seek first the kingdom, everything else will be added to us. In the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and wealth. Meaning when I pursue my relationship with him, I have everything else that I need. And so that starts with really even being honest with myself and saying, well, some things are important to me that probably shouldn't be as important to me as I've made them to be. I need to probably shift my priorities a little bit. I need to honor God in some ways that maybe I haven't before. So, so the bottom line in these five takeaways, we want you to fill them in. And then we want to give you three opportunities today in, in some special ministry um, because we can't just hear the word. We want to do the word. But let's fill these in. Number one, use your light as a weapon. Guys, light represents truth in this context. Although, have you guys ever flipped on a light switch when somebody had been in the dark or they were asleep? That did kind of weaponize them. Or you walked out of the movie theater during the day and it's like your eyes took a minute to adjust. The world doesn't like the light. People that are bound in darkness may reject you. They may reject the God that you serve. But, but the reality is you still use your light, not just as a weapon against the darkness, but as a weapon in your own life. When you're feeling discouraged, when you're feeling full of fear, when you're feeling like you're not good compared to so-and-so or whatever the lies are that the enemy tells you, you, that's why it's so important that you know the truth so that you can talk back to those feelings. You don't want to be bound by your feelings because guys, you don't have to be a young person 
to, to realize that our feelings will take us on an emotional roller coaster. And roller coasters are fun. I'm thinking last year when we went with summer interns to Six Flags and I was with the group that had like the pass where you could like go quickly. And y'all, we made ourselves sick. Like literally, we, we rode them right back to back to back to back. And honestly, at one point, I felt like my liver was like up here and like my stomach was like in my shoe. Like I felt like I twisted my body on the inside all kinds of different ways. Like I didn't know if I didn't know what was going to make me feel better. If I like, if I went to the bathroom, if I threw up, if I passed out. I mean, I wanted to pass my own self out, like black my own self out because I just felt so horrible. And it took a long time to get all my insides like back where they were going. And I feel like some believers are like that. They listen to their emotions all week long. And so they just, they're super inconsistent and not steady. A lot of that has to do with your character where you decide, you know what, I'm going to be who I'm supposed to be, not just while I'm at church, but all week long. And so we use our light to help, like the word is our weapon against all of the in, inconsistencies and the fears and in all of the emotions. Number two, immerse yourself fully in the Lord. You know, we like to say it this way, like you have to pick a team. You just have to decide. And the younger you make that decision, the easier it is to make. You know, when pastors Dean and Kathy decided to serve God with all of their heart and jump in, they had a call of God on their life to pastor this church. Guys, that was not as easy of a decision as it was when Pastor Faith and I made it because we weren't married. We didn't have children. We were in the beginning of our life, not kind of in a, in a further along season of our life. The decision can still be made. Pastors Dean and Kathy made the decision and God helped them. He honored them when they dumped all of their savings into the church and just went full on into God's plan. But, but at this point in this season of life, like you have no excuse. Like this is the easiest time to just decide. And like, guys, don't give your destiny over for the voices of people around you that you feel like may make fun of you. That's so lame. For, for the God that died on the cross for you, sent his son to die on the cross for you. So immerse yourself fully in the Lord. Number three, give to God what only you can give. What you have to give is not what somebody else has to give. So no comparison, like Pastor Greg already said. Many believers hold back their time, their talent, and their treasure. I encourage you not to do that. You're already in a season right now where you can attend one and serve one. What does that mean? This service right here, attend this service, but come early or stay late and serve in another service. Number five, guard your heart. 